our guest in this segment, Mark Savitt from the Mortgage Center, the Fed cut rates by a half percent uh, within the last week, and that's caused a lot of excitement in the markets. But what is it doing for interest rates? Mr. Savitt, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Well, it hasn't done anything for interest rates in a positive uh uh, with a positive effect, uh, rates actually uh, went up a little bit. Uh, this morning before I came in here, I stopped by the office and I pulled up the, uh, uh, the U.S. Treasuries for, uh, for today mm -hmm. or right now. Of course, that fluctuates day to day, hour to hour. Uh, and uh, right now we are trading at uh, 3.806 on the 10-year. The 10-year has the most effect on, uh, on long-term rates, mortgage rates. Uh, when uh, the day the Fed came out, uh, uh, I guess it was last week on Wednesday when they announced at 2 o'clock, we were um, uh, 3.605, something like that. Uh, and then it actually, for a very brief few minutes, went into 3.5 and change. Uh, so if the 10-year if the drops, that's good for interest rates. That's, it, uh, it's, it, interest rates will be dropping. Uh, and then from there, it just shot up. Uh, I get asked every day, but why is it that the uh, the rates are going up if the Fed cut the interest rates? Well, the Fed, the Fed, uh, they don't cut long-term interest rates. They don't cut mortgage rates. They do uh, the Fed uh, Fed funds. Uh, that affects things like adjustable interest rates, uh, interest rates for uh, uh, home equity lines of credit, other things, and the money that uh, the the rate where the Banks will borrow money from the Federal Reserve Board, uh, uh, what they call it from the overnight window. So that's what was cut. But uh, as soon as that happened, everybody started looking down the road to what the next cut would be. They look at all the economic news that is released. And it's the old adage, what good news is bad news is bad news is good news. The, uh, the Fed is looking to cut further. They're looking for... Um, uh, problems in the economy where the economy is slowing down. Uh, if the economy is humming along and doing well, then they don't want to touch anything. Uh, the, the traders, uh, folks in the bond market know that uh, this is um, what they're thinking because mm -hmm. they build in the good and bad news. So uh, right now, we're, uh, uh, things have moved up higher than they were before the Fed cut. My son told me that the day after because he, he's getting married in November and he his fiance and he are looking at uh, trying to buy a house in the next year or two. So he always he's always looking at the 30 year mortgage rates. And uh, he said, how come the rates went up after the Fed cut rates? And I gave him the mark speech. I said, well, the it, prime rate doesn't necessarily affect mortgage rates. That's more the 10 year. Right. And but ultimately, they, they do tend to kind of long term follow as as. The Fed rate falls, mortgage rates tend to fall eventually. Indirectly, uh, it's what they do. So if if they, it's it's not always what they do, it's also what they say. Matt, I feel like we're doing this old show here again <laughs> we used to have. Uh, it's what they say. After the uh, announcement was made, like every meeting that they have where there's an, uh, a meeting, the uh, chairman of the, of the Fed comes out, Jerome Powell comes out, and he gives um, uh, maybe a 15-minute speech, and then he takes questions. So it's, it's what they say. They try to read into it. They also look at the meeting. Uh, a month from now, the meeting, uh, the minutes of the meeting will come out. So they look at little things, what other governors, uh, the Fed governors do. Uh, I think a lot of the problem is and why it took so long for the Fed to, to cut at all. And, and they say that a half a percent was a bit of a surprise. Everybody was expecting a quarter of a percent. But one of the other things is it was built in. They had expected the uh, the markets expected a half a point cut. It was a 63 percent chance that was going to happen. Now let's say they only cut a quarter. Well, that would have been a, a a negative surprise. So you would have seen things move up a little more. On the other hand, if you had seen uh, a cut of three quarters of a percent, that would have been a pleasant surprise, and you would have seen rates move down. All in all, uh, the economy is slowing down. I've got some other numbers here. And um, I think you're going to see in the very near future, within weeks, you're going to see the the uh, the 10-year Treasury, uh, the two-year, and also uh, mortgage-backed securities are involved in this too. But you're going to see things start to moving, to start moving back down because the economy is slowing down considerably. 
and they're trying to prevent a recession. Billy? Yeah, Mark, I'm a little confused, uh, and I do not follow the home interest loans as close as you and others, but it was at 7.8% last fall, and right before the uh, the Fed cut the rate, right after the Fed cut the rate, is 6.09, so nearly a full percentage points of the numbers that I have with home interest loans. Uh, that would Im- that would imply that the Fed cut did have some effect on the mortgage ra- on the home interest loans. Well, the Fed. You're saying last year the Fed cut? No, no. Before the last uh, last year, the home interest loans was seven point eight. You're talking and, about the the long term mortgage. Rate. Yes, long term mortgage. Right. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Right. What yeah. happened was they did, and then you're correct. They started to move down, but that was not with the Fed. They anticipate what the Fed was going to do. But for the last year, uh, they thought maybe eh, maybe six to eight months, they thought rates were going to start moving down. It's uh, a combination of things. Uh, it's not uh, uh, in, you know solely on what the Fed does. They look at the the markets themselves. Look at what's the strength or the weakness of the economy. Uh, the mortgage rates, the highest they got, uh, were in the. Uh, low to mid eights for 30 year fixed rate mortgages, which we haven't seen in, I don't know how many years, a long time. Uh, So what happened was the uh, things started slowing down. We started seeing more unemployment. We had inflation, but we started to see inflation coming down. Uh, It was at, um, I think 9.1% was the worst that it was. And it, it started to drop, so everybody believed uh, in the markets that there was going to be a cut by the Fed. Uh, and the Fed, of course, is always afraid of not just inflation, but on the other side, they're afraid of a recession. So it's kind of a balancing act. So they started to move down, and they've been moving down uh, pretty well, as a matter of fact. Uh, our, um, the, our rates last week, uh, before the Fed cut, uh, on a... Um, a 30-year government loans. Uh, this was, uh, we had, we locked in about six VA and other type of government loans. And everyone wanted me to wait. The buyers wanted me to wait until the Fed came out. And I said, look, I've been doing this too long to know that you can have a negative effect when the rates are cut, when the Fed cuts their rates. So we locked them in. And I got a phone call from one of our borrowers who said, look, the Fed cut the rate, you know, you know, I want to know if I can get that better rate. I said, well, they didn't cut the mortgage rates. I said, you, you, we locked him in at 5.125%, 5 and an eighth percent for a 30-year fixed with one and a half total points. So he was much better off than he was. But, you know, we've had the past week we've been doing it. It's been an education process for people. We try to tell them. And that includes some real estate professionals, too. They don't, people don't understand because they don't follow it the way that we do. <laughs> so, But they have moved down. That's why I think they're going to be moving down further here. This is just kind of a, a new thing. We haven't seen uh, the Fed cut rates since, uh, uh, since COVID. All right, so let me jump in and ask if if the uh, the Fed rate cut does not necessarily impact the housing market, what is the major impact then on that housing side to see those numbers moving up or down? The impact is what what's happening in the economy. All the reports that come out a couple of times a week, unemployment, employment, Uh, the CPI, things involve inflation. They want to see is inflation really coming back down? Is it starting to go back up? There's a lot of other factors. One other important factor is mortgage-backed securities. Mortgage-backed securities is, I know you know, uh, mortgage-backed securities are uh, where you bundle the closed loans and those are sold. Now, during COVID, one of the reasons why the rates went down between 2 and 3% is because the Fed jumped in and started buying the mortgage-backed securities. They've got those on their balance sheet, and they're trying to um, get rid of those right now. They're trying to reduce their balance sheet. But the thing is they're also competing with the private market right now. So that is affecting the private market. The Fed said they were going to back off a little bit, uh, but they really haven't so far. And I understand they want to get rid of that. They want to get back to um, – you know, where the market will operate, you know, by the private market will operate by itself. But um, there's so many things involved. There's so many, so many wheels moving in this thing. Mm-hmm. And you have the other thing is with the, uh, with the Fed, you have all of the, uh, the members of the board come out and make comments 
We know what the chairman thinks because he tells us. He's, it's one of the most transparent feds, I'll tell you that, that we've seen in a very long time. You never saw anybody come out and do uh, a news conference after they had a meeting. They would wait until the next month and they'd look at the minutes uh, of, of the, uh, the meeting where the decisions were made. But you have people coming on, you know, all these different Fed governors coming out with their opinions, and every time they open up their mouths, good or bad, it spooks the market one way or the other, and, you know, we're off and running, and it takes days uh, for the market to come back. If the rates went up, it takes days for it, to, or sometimes longer for them to come back to recover from that. Um, I think they should have a gag order on members of the Fed and just speak as one voice. That's a and good that's point. the chairman. But – we don't have that. So everybody, and then you're in a very, you know, uh, uh, a hot uh, political season right now. Uh, candidates come out and they make comments. Everybody has an opinion, and it's the, uh, the markets uh, just, they're rattled, and they're just starting to, to calm down a little bit. Are there 24 Fed board governors? I think so. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. But most of them are very quiet. You never hear from them at all. But a couple of them who are more vocal than others, really have an outsized influence on the market because you might only have four of 24 Fed board governors who agree, but if two or three of them all speak the same thing, it sounds like the whole board feels that way. And I think that really lends itself to some strange reactions from the market when they do that. Well, the board didn't vote unanimously this time for the first time since, I think, the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. There was one, and I forget the name of the individual. I apologize. It was a lady that, that, did, yes. that voted separate, yeah. Right. Um, they um, uh, they come out, and it's. I th my personal opinion is that they're all looking for their 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> And they come out and they say things, and we just look at them like, you have no idea. I think one thing the Federal Reserve Board should do is not just look at the numbers. First of all, when they come out with the numbers, you know, whether it's unemployment, whether it's jobs created, whether it's inflation news, three weeks later, it's changing. Because a lot of what they do, especially where unemployment and employment is concerned, they're all surveys. So they... They, they need to get a little bit better with that. And I realize that's been the, the way that they've operated for years and years. But, you know, they, they talk about all these jobs that were created, which is great for the economy. And they came out, and I think it was, what, eight, uh, 818,000 jobs all of a sudden disappeared. Uh, another thing is you have to look at when jobs are created, what are those jobs? Most of them are federal jobs, government jobs. And then you have a lot of uh, health care is involved in there, things like that. The other thing is... A lot of jobs, if, um, well, let's say somebody has a job working for a specific company and they move to another position, whether it's a new position or they took over, that's, create, that's, that's labeled as a job, a new job, because somebody maybe made a lateral move. That shouldn't be counted. So then they count that job and then the person that you had to replace gets counted? Correct. So that's two jobs that get counted? Right. And the other thing we're seeing is there's a lot of jobs, which now they're starting to show part-time jobs. There's a lot of folks out there with, you know, the uh, things are tough out there right now. Mm -hmm. You've got uh, people that um, have to take a second job, sometimes a third job. You may have a spouse that was staying home with the kids and realized, well, in order to, to make ends meet, they have to go back into the workforce. So there's a, a, they don't explain a lot of that. They just give you a number. I saw on the CNBC website a week or two ago that mortgage refine numbers had actually improved. A number of people who are refinancing their mortgages are, <laughs> excuse me, are you seeing that locally as well? Uh, we are. We we just starting to see that. Uh, we've we've had some, uh, especially where the government. Um, uh, mortgages are uh, affected. You have uh, the VAs. They have well, all of the government loans. <clears throat> excuse me, all of the government loans have streamlined processes. For example, and I'm glad you brought that up. It's a good point. If you're uh, if you are uh, a veteran and you want to do an Earl refinance, a, st a streamlined refinance, no appraisal. They don't check your income. They don't check your assets. They don't even pull a credit report. They don't worry about ratios. And the reason they do that is if you can pay the rate up here, you can surely pay the rate here. All they do is check to make sure that you've paid your mortgage on time for the last 12 months. USDA is somewhat similar to that, and so are the, um, uh, the FHA loans. Conventional is a little different. Mark, uh, you've, you've made the point, and it's quite apparent there's a lot of moving parts, and so it's no one 
one indicator of where it's going to go. Uh, but are you optimistic that the mortgage rates will continue to uh, decrease through time? I am because I'm watching. I also uh, watch, and I've been doing this for 39 years, yeah. and I watch to see where things are going. And again, we're on Main Street. We know what's really going on. We go into the grocery stores. We listen to people that come in. We also look at things like um, credit cards. People are buying, but they're buying on credit cards. Credit card, I think I saw this morning, was now at one, the debt is at one trillion dollars. People are living on credit cards. Mm -hmm. I know this sounds like a political speech, but it's not. It's it's reality is what it is. So um, the... Uh, I, I believe because the economy is slowing down, inflation has come down, luckily, uh, but it's people are uh, not, their wages were not keeping up with inflation. So people are not spending. Uh, some people are. You see, you know, people are starting to get back and go out on vacations and things like that. But I think that was because of COVID, where they were trapped for so many years. Now it's like, you know, you get cabin fever. You've got to get out and do things. Sometimes if things are not going well in your life, you go out and buy something, it makes you feel better. But a lot of that is being paid for with borrowing. It's not being paid for with savings. Savings are down. Uh, I saw a report not too long ago that if the uh, a typical American family had an emergency and had to come up with $500, they couldn't do it. I see people come in that are in their um, 30s, 40s, 50s, and older, and we look at their assets. You know, they're getting close to retirement age. They have nothing. Yeah, that's frightening. Right, yeah, it it's very frightening, yeah. and it's all on borrowing. So, but with having said all of that, because of that, things are gonna start slowing down a little bit. We're seeing um, um, the, um, um, you know, things still cost more, so people are finally tapped out. They can't borrow anymore. Things are gonna start slowing down, and as a result of that, you're gonna see interest rates coming down. In the absence of a catastrophic event, such as we had in COVID, uh, some of the other external factors, would they influence the, uh, the mortgage rates at all? And I'm talking specifically about the, the unrest we have in the Middle East. And I'm also talking about upcoming election. Uh, and there are probably other things as well. But these two major events, will either one of those have enough of an impact will have either one have an impact on the mortgage rates absolutely every we're a global uh, a global economy today everything affects mortgage rates if you have a, a problem in the middle east uh you know we get we purchase oil from the middle east uh if there's any type of a disruption in in that that's going to affect us back here and if gasoline prices go sky high uh you're going to see things that also contributes to slowing down. My wife and I just were out uh, west. We uh, went away for uh, um, uh, on a cruise, and we went out of Seattle, and we saw the price of gasoline out there. It's it's crazy. It was five and six dollars a gallon for regular gasoline. Wow, that's it, like the price of boat gasoline. It's mm -hmm. crazy. It's crazy. But it's. Um, but every, to answer your question, yeah. everything affects the sure. market. They okay. look at everything. So despite everything that we're talking about, we just finished talking with members of our, our Board of Education, and they're talking about a 700-home development that is proposed and coming into the area. We're seeing growth all around the area. Where is the housing market right now? Is it as good as it's been in a while? It well, is in Berkeley County. <laughs> the housing market, new homes right now, are selling more than existing homes. Existing homes is is coming back, but the reason why it wasn't uh, moving as well is because if you know if you've got a two or a three percent interest rate, you're not going anywhere, right. and a lot of people have that. But now you're seeing rates coming back down. I anticipate that our rates, if uh, even though they went up a little bit more today, uh, I, within the next couple of weeks, I think you're going to see rates back in the low fives again, which is what we had even the beginning of uh, or the end of last week. Uh, but I think you're going it, to, and it was just touching on getting into the fours. Once you get into that, people are going to say, well, you know what, I've had this house for so many years. Yes, I have a very low interest rate, let's say a 2.5% interest rate. 
you know, uh, maybe they don't need, maybe they're going to pay cash for the next house. Maybe they're going to put a bigger down payment down. So even if the interest rate is a little bit higher, it's going to kind of uh, level itself out where they can afford that. They want to move on. They've had uh, maybe another child or two. Um, Need more space. More space, right. Yeah. Maybe they want to downsize a little bit. And if you've been in a house for 20 years, your effective interest rate becomes a lot higher anyway because you start looking at a new roof, new windows, new floors. I'm living it right now. That's why I say that. <laughs> I've so, been through that. Yes, you've been through that. I'm, I'm still going through it. So, But uh, but that at that point, you might as well buy a, a newly constructed house because all that stuff's now new and you don't have to spend all the money to Well, the problem is, it. though, when you go to, if you go to sell that house and – an appraiser or a home inspector comes out and he looks at that roof and, and he says, you know, Rob, I know you're selling the house because you didn't want to pay for that roof, but they need to have a new roof before you can sell this house. You're paying for it one way or the other. That's right. Right. Uh, Mark, about a minute and a half to go. If you were to uh, project a year from now, where do you think you'll see home mortgage rates being in 12 months? Well, I left my crystal ball out in the truck. but <laughs> Give uh, me the lottery numbers, too, if you find it. Uh, you know, I'm keeping those for myself. Thank you. Uh, I think you're probably going to be in the four to five range. That's right where I think you're going to be. That's pretty good. Yeah, uh, which is what we had before COVID. We were in the fours. Yeah. I mean, after COVID, when things started to move up, um, I shouldn't say before. Well, before COVID, we actually were in the fives, fours and fives. Which everything's relative, but when I was in my prime home buying years, I'd have killed for a 5% mortgage, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, I can remember. I, again, I've been here a long time. I can remember... Uh, the uh, interest rates, we found a rate sheet cleaning out the office one day, um, which we probably should do a little bit more on. But, uh, we found a rate sheet from 1991, and it was 10.5% with 1.5 points. Yeah. You, you know how I know that? Because when I bought my first house in 88, it was 10.5%. And wow. if you'd gone back to 83, 84, it was about 13%. 81 actually was the 81, worst. 13. 81 was the worst. I was going to buy a house in 81. I said it was 18%. Yeah. And I said, There's, that's not going to happen. Um, that's when my cousin yeah. bought a house, 81. Right. 18%. But I bought one 83, my first house, and I paid 12.5%. And I was glad to get it. Mark, good to see you again. How Thank do people you. get in touch with you at the Mortgage Center, sir? Call us at 304 267 9040. Mark Sapp. You get a mortgage and a stand-up act, too. He's got some really good one-liners. <laughs>